Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. He's and a level three whiskey sommelier. I am right, and tired, it, and this is an Akintosh and American Oak Scotch whiskey. And it's from Kevin Fordson. Kevin Fordson, you magnificent bastard! And it's only three weeks till Daniel month. Dude, you are pissing away the month. <laughs> Just, you're gonna have, if you're lucky, half a month. This is Daniel month. Now, let, let there be no mistake. Now, March we is Daniel month. We are firmly in the grasp of Daniel month's tiny little paws. <laughs> no. March is Daniel month. No, it's not Everybody Daniel. knows that. Now, look, go look it up Dude. on Google. Go Google Dude. it. And Wikipedia. Oh my god. If you look up March in Wikipedia. Oh my god. It's one of the line items for March in Wikipedia is March is Daniel month. You know what you should, so are you doing Daniel month where you just choose your whiskeys that you like? I'm going to try to keep it things that people can buy, but I'm going to spend a little more time on the things I like to do when I'm researching a whiskey. You know what you would do if you truly cared about the people? Are you ready? <laughs> Say, hey, let's help the people be able to pick out specific notes from a whiskey, like the most common notes. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out what are the most uh, caramel dominant whiskeys out there. That's what I did. And then the, the week after that, what are the most apple dominant whiskeys out no, no, there? I, I did the dominant flavor profiles of all the whiskey categories with exam example whiskeys. So on my list. So to say, if you ever ever got confused about what the oak note is, then this is these where you're are find it really strong. These are where the oak notes show up in spades. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because I was trying. My whole goal with being the Daniel Month was to help people understand how my, what my brain's looking for when I'm trying things. All right, new idea. <laughs> Daniel Month in January. It's over. <laughs> You missed it. <laughs> All right. So, what are the what are the flavor? What are the profile? What, what are the notes? What are the things that you're going to help people pick out? Well, essentially, what I did was I took the Charles McLean flavor wheel, okay, and I picked the dominant heading categories of right. everything, right. and then I only selected a handful of dominant flavor profiles in each of the main categories. Okay, and by doing that, and I did it because you can get oak. The, here's what oak shows up as in a, a scotch, okay. but here's what oak shows up as in bourbon. Those are two very different things, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I've got sub examples of each one of the major dominant flavor profiles, and it's enough to take us through a whole month trying things that you could absolutely get. Now, it'll mean that we basically take a month off of getting through our gift whiskeys. No, we just take like the... But really, I just did it. So it was Monday through Thursday was Daniel Days, and Friday was still Donation Day. So, so Friday is always donation day, but Monday through Thursday was us focusing on the flavor You still have like two thirds of February. No. You got no, this. No, no. You got this. No, no, no. We're doing March. This is awkward. Let's talk about the whiskey. That's no, now three minutes in. I'm camping out. It's four minutes in. I'm camping out on, oh, is this a new one? Yeah. Okay. Is this a new one? <laughs> so this is one of the uh, few lowland distilleries. Back in the day, there were a lot of lowland distilleries. But there was a sort of rush to the bottom in a lot of lowland stories where they sort of shifted to trying to make gins and because they were much closer to England, they were trying to make things that were more common and desired in some of the English population. And this is a huge oversimplification, but they kind of moved into gins and blends a lot more aggressively. And uh, there was sort of a collapse due to a lot of reasons, not just that one, but like the wars. And yeah. I mean, for example, at one point, Akintoshin lost a huge chunk of barrels because a bomb got dropped on them uh -huh. during a blitz. So on the nose. Right. So this is that smokiness. Th so Akintoshin is considered the Glasgow malt. Okay. It's, in, it's right. And it's uh, goes back to 1823. That's as old as some of the oldest Highland distilleries. Akintoshin is one of the most heavy oil uh, scotches that you'll try without being overwhelmed with smoke. It's like a, like a, just a forest fire rolling over a damp, wet field of grass. You are broken. A damp, wet field of grass, there's a forest fire next door and that smoke is just rolling over it. Your nose is broken. Man, how are, how are you not getting the smoke note? Because there's not one. <laughs> 
now it's getting like a brininess to it. It has to do with how they're doing the cuts in the distillation. Okay. And what kind of casks they're using versus smoking things. So right? the American casks aren't going to have these flavors. What are they pulling out of the cask? No, they absolutely have those flavors if, if you're doing a triple distilled malt with a really uh, deep cut on the third distillation and that's what you're putting. So you're getting on more of the tails. tails. So you're getting more of the big, thick, heavy esters and long chain, right? Yeah. And, uh, and or what's going to create esterification in the barrels. So the, the more oily. Yeah. Heavy oils, vanilla and dark, deep fruit without, but without, uh, or without the fruit notes being like plum or fig because there's no sherry cask. Right. But you're still getting a heavy fruit and then a lot of vanilla. And then Akintoshin is one of these distilleries that really clings to the throat. It's very oily. And the palate. It's very oily. Yeah. You're running out of steam, man. Yeah, I'm just, just right now imagined if I could pull my hoodie thing over and use and, it. As and a, just go to sleep. Use it as a cushion right here. All right, give us some notes here. What's on the, uh, on the nose? So to me, on the nose, I always get cut grass. Yeah, the grass. And, and cut then, hay. I'm getting a lot of saltiness. Yep. Well... Um, well, so no, no, I'm not um, getting salt. I'm getting salt compared to the first things we just drank. Right. But if you think of salt being something that's presented by Talisker or these guys, it's not in that category of salt. Um, I'm getting that sort of vanilla, citrus, slightly metallic sugar. There's, yes. Right. Cut grass and hay. And then I'm starting I'm to get the oils. Grass, hay, um, citrus, not so much. <clears throat> But vanilla that leads into a metallic note. And then in the taste, there's a little bit of black licorice on the finish and a little bit of barrel spice, but without it taking over. And it's really just because it sort of clings to everything. Akintoshin, to me, always feels like as I drink it, it's coating my mouth and coating my throat. Mm. So what are the characteristics of typical lowland distilleries? Uh... <clears throat> They're supposedly considered to be light and fruity and floral, but th I think they forget that you can also do your cuts in such a way that you keep all of those heavy oils in there. Hmm. And I think if you would, they cut this more uh, narrow, it would be closer to an Irish flavor. Man. But because they left in those longer... So if people are over space side floral sweetness, and then they've tried... Um, the Smoky Islas, and they yes. want to see what else Scotland has to offer. Yes. I think this is a good place to go. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I want you to try the three wood because this is also a no-age statement, Akintoshin. It's a lot darker. But this, well, this is not just bourbon cask. This is also uh, sherry cask. Did you say this was bourbon cask? Or did That's you say all American first fill bourbon. Right. So bourbon, not just American bourbon. Whiskey. Okay, bourbon. And so this one is Oloroso and Pedro Menes and bourbon. And to me... You'll see the same base characteristics of Akintoshin, wow. but add to it pipe tobacco yeah, and all these dark, fruity, sherry cask finishes. Yeah, Three Wood is is Three Wood is just an amazing whiskey. Well, and the wood does show up. Yeah, but see, you still have that same oily, yeah. clingy aspect. Mm -hmm. And then the tobacco shows up. Mm -hmm. the dark chocolate now. Yeah. Now, so I think. You, you were headed down the path of saying something I think is really cool, which is if you get out of space side, but you want to explore, Akintoshin is absolutely a brilliant next step yeah. into other flavors, but still maintaining the approachable aspects of a friendly bourbon cask space side. Yeah, you're not in the briar patch of a really strong Isla yet. Yeah. But it's getting uh, more character, more stuff going on than just the fruity floral sweetness you usually get from a space side. We got E Wild 66 just got my new edition for the whiskey room. It's a prohibition era prescription. Yeah, yeah. So for alcohol, he put this photo up there, and I think this is the coolest thing. I have one in my office, and mm -hmm. but I can't find it right now. Someone moved it into a hiding place <laughs> to keep it safe. But you can get these online, and they're really mm -hmm. cool. You can get an original because back in the day in prohibition, the only way to get whiskey yeah. was if a doctor prescribed it. As a matter of fact, there's a really amazing story and. Right now, because we're on the spot in third video, and I can't remember if it was Buchanan. It's the story of Buchanan, or it's, but it's one of the big blending families. It wasn't Walker. 
I think it was Buchanan. Right. Uh, it could have been Dewar's. He goes to America during Prohibition. Mm -hmm. He gets on a train and he's looking for whiskey and he realizes, oh yeah, that's right, it's Prohibition. No one can give me whiskey. So one of the porters says, well, at the next stop, why don't you get off and go to one of the doctors in town? He can give you a prescription, <laughs> right? Yeah. So he goes into the doctor's office. He gives him a prescription for whiskey. Yeah. He writes it up on one of the same things this guy had. And he goes and takes it to the chemist who gives him a bottle of whiskey and he turns it over, and on the bottom it says Buchanan's. <laughs> it was his whiskey that they used to give him as a medicinal prescription. It'll cure what it yeah. allows you. Yeah. I love that kind of stuff. So the question is, um, and it follows with the second guy who also asks this question. Uh, Ed Curran's 96, what interesting or intriguing whiskey memorabilia does everyone have? Yes, when you decorate, what kind of things that are not bottles... Would you set up in a room to be a cool whiskey room? Just for decoration only. Uh, comic books on the wall. That's it's not a whiskey room. <laughs> so, for example, over here, what you can't see is we have one of the original glass framed signs of the Bank of Scotland. Yeah, well, here. 1695. And it's one of those ones set up so it looked like it hangs outside on the street, you know? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, the sign's not that old. Okay. The Bank of Scotland was founded in 1695. I don't know how old the sign is. Cool. But that's cool, right? So I've got stuff like that all over. I think the prescription thing framed and put up on a wall, that's pretty cool. We should do an episode about m miracle whiskey cures. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly old wives tales. <laughs> yeah, really are. <laughs> anyway, come up. Uh, I think that's a great question, on, and they're talking about it on Reddit, but talk about it in the comments. How do you decorate a whiskey room? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. To fight and steal and drink? Yes, I'm ready to fight for a friend. Because if you fight for a friend or a lover's heart, may you drink with friends. And us. Cheers. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.